Well, welcome, Tom. We're here today in our Contour Studios. Uh, Tom Parks, a friend of ours, uh, somebody we've known, right, Bridget? Long time. Long time. Um, we're excited to have Tom here to talk a little bit about the, the process and, and when you go to contract and what to look for. So, Tom, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, as you know, Charlie, thank you. Bridget, thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate the invite today. So uh, as you know, I'm a closing attorney. I'm a specialized in real estate. So, you know, God forbid anyone gets arrested. Don't call me. You'll get me electric chair. Right? But uh, in uh, the part of the world which focuses on real estate, um, I have a lot of experience. I've been doing it a very, very long time. Right. Uh, it seems longer, actually, than it is. But mm -hmm. it's, been a, it's been about 20-plus years. I've done... Wow. Honestly, tens of thousands of closings, right. truthfully. Uh, so I have a lot of experience, and uh, I'd love to share it with you guys today. That's great. Um, you know, as I, I know you're a bank attorney, but you also are a buyer's attorney and seller's attorneys, That's right? That's correct, yes. And represent buyers and sellers. So, Tom, tell us a little bit. What, what do you think um, a buyer or a seller should look for? An attorney before we discuss particulars about transactions sure what do you think that they should look for when they look to you know interview attorneys it's funny I, I would say that's probably the most in I think I would say it's the most important part of the entire process and all in okay. all truthfulness mm -hmm. the things that matter most is experience mm -hmm. okay truthfully it's experience and it's access okay. and I'll explain to you what I mean by that and really not just with attorneys, but with all the professionals in the entire process. Right. Right. So what I mean by access is you, you, have to, you have to seek out a professional who is available to you. Right. Really, really important. For example, and I'll speak to attorneys, a lot of times you, when you have a question, when there's something that you need, when you need an answer, you can't get it because the attorney is not available. Mm -hmm. Either yeah. they don't return phone calls, they're in court all the time, mm -hmm. if you don't pick somebody who specializes in real estate, and by the time they get back to you, if they get back to you, mm -hmm. or maybe you speak with a paralegal who really is, uh, doesn't give you the answer or doesn't have the answers that you desire, um, it could be too late. You could have missed your opportunity. So access, somebody that's available, somebody returns phone calls, someone who gives out their cell phone, mm -hmm. really, 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 really important. And, and not, just for, not just for an attorney, but for really any professional throughout the process. Mm -hmm. And the other thing for which there is no substitute at all is experience. Right. Right. Experience really matters because, it, you know, the, anyone could do, most any attorney can do a real estate transaction when everything goes right, okay? But I gotta tell you, that never happens. There's always some type of, um, there's always some type of obstacle to overcome, mm -hmm. and that's when experience really counts. So picking someone who's available to you and someone that's been through it, I would say the two probably most important factors. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I really would. We've been in the business so long that, you know, you see everything that could possibly happen. What are you seeing some issues that are coming up in contracts? CFOs or, you know, whatever. Right. That's a great question. So, you know, the market is changing. So, yeah, you have the typical, the typical, every house, especially on Long Island and mm -hmm. Queens and this general area, you know, They've been, they're older homes, they've been improved at some point mm -hmm. in their life. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is maybe, maybe there's an above ground pool, or they've done a finished, they put a finished basement, they've done new air conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, some of them have gone and been extended, they've done dormers, or they mm -hmm. put extensions mm -hmm. on. Gone into the and garage. They've gone into the garage, right. that's right. a great that's example. <laughs> They've converted the garage yep. to living space. Right. And, um, and all of those things that we just mentioned, okay, with limited exception, require a certificate of occupancy, okay? And that certificate of occupancy means that the town has come, they've inspected, the, they've inspected them, and mm -hmm. they've given their stamp of approval, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. when, it was a, uh, when it was a very, very strong seller's market, okay, mm -hmm. um, Sellers were getting away without having to provide CFOs for many of those items. Okay, right. 
Now, I'm not talking about the dormer or I'm not talking about the extension, extension but things like finished basements and, and, um, and sheds and above ground pools right. and some of the lesser important mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. uh, it's starting to change a little bit. I'm finding mm -hmm. that buyers are being more selective. They're looking for these types of, uh, you know, looking for sellers to obtain the COs where they're not in place. And I would say that's kind of how the market is changing mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. The flip side of that is the reason that a lot of, a lot of sellers don't, don't get CFOs or don't have CFOs for the homes, truthfully, is because they're expensive to obtain. Right. And uh, honestly, they don't want to pay tax on the improved right. property. So it, it's a double-edged sword, and it's something you should really speak to your attorney and your mortgage professional about. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And it's always a matter of degree, right? You, that, you know, a, an extra bathroom is you don't have a C of O for, but Charlie and I have done transactions where people have erected an entire yeah. second floor. Yeah, sure. second floor. And sure. no C of O has been obtained. And you make, a great, you make a great point because it's not all the same. No, it's not. So in many right. of these towns, if you put in a skylight, if you do a bay window, mm -hmm. you need to file a permit or get a C of O right. for it. Right. That's clearly not the same as putting a, a, a big addition on the right. back of your house or doing a second floor. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you really need to talk to your attorney, right. talk to your mortgage professional about right. to see if it's something that uh, you know that you would even want to pursue with the seller when somebody is looking to purchase a home before they find a home w would you encourage them to reach out and find an attorney prior to going that's good that's another great question mm -hmm. so I you know I think lining up your professionals is the most important thing and that's something that you should absolutely do before you even reach out to an agent in all truthfulness, okay? Um, or in the alternative, if you do reach out, you should do it at the same time, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. You need to line up your mortgage professional, you need to line up, line up your agent, and you need to line up your attorney and your home inspector, right. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, they should all work together, they're all working for you, you're the client, they have the same goal in mind, which is right. to get you into your house, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know it's important that you do those things early so they can guide you uh, through the process and uh, try to overcome or prevent any, any, any issues that may happen down the road. We also know about your team because you have a team of people behind you. Your office, I mean, carries phenomenal. I mean, we mm -hmm. can go down each person in that Thank office you. that you have there. They're unbelievable and th they, their service that they give your clients um, and they pick up the phone. I mean, I, I definitely you. wanted to mention that to you. Um, yeah. But that's important too because we, we find every now and then we'll have somebody that has, has an attorney that maybe is not in doing a lot of transactions, maybe doesn't have an office. I mean, um, I don't want to say he's working out of his car, but I mean, like, people can... People can look you up, find you, come into your office, meet with you, meet with your team. You return your calls. I mean, yeah. oh, thank you. You're top notch, Tom. Thank you, thank you. And that mm. goes back to what I mentioned a little earlier about access. You have to have an attorney who's accessible. Right. Truthfully, it's critically important. And um, you know, listen, it's 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 the biggest transaction of many people's lives. Right. They're right. stressful. They don't, they don't understand the process. It's new to them. Even if they've sold the house before, what have they done? One or two transactions. Right. right. They, 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 need to be, they need to know what's going on. And one of the things I like to preach, in all honesty, and, uh, um, and, and to the people who work with me and for me, is that, you know, obviously, you need to answer your phone. You need to return phone calls. Mm -hmm. But also, no news is news. Sometimes, right. even if there's nothing new right. to report on a transaction, just calling a client and letting them know, listen, we haven't forgotten about you. Right. We're still working on, we're still working on right. your file. I just mm -hmm. have nothing new to report. As mm -hmm. soon as, as soon as I do, I promise you, we'll be in touch. Right. That goes a long, that goes a long way, and I think and how helps hard to assuage fears. It's a phone call, is all right. it is. You know? right. And we hear or it even in our yeah. business with uh, mortgage professionals, you know, and. And real real estate professionals as well. You know, it's it's just a professional courtesy to right. 
you know. To keep someone. Yeah, in, I think in, it would de-escalate the issues that that come up because people have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. When title issues come up or. Um, you know, legal issues come up, they don't realize that we don't see that until a title report is done. Right. And so when you get things that come up on title, they get very excited and we right. try and explain, well, we have to wait until that title well, report is received and then, you know, your attorney will go through step by step what has to be done. And as you know, sometimes a lot of things have to be done. I mean, we're not well, when attorneys, is that title, when, when should that title be ordered? Right. So, so I think it's a good time. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about the process. Sure. Okay. So, sure. Uh, and because that's one of that's one Absolutely. of the one of the key moments during the process. So, the way I like to I like to approach mm -hmm. a new transaction is okay. So you're at the point you found a house. You're really excited. Your agent mm -hmm. has showed you a bunch. You've decided on which is the right house to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you have your pre-qualification in hand, which mm -hmm. is something that's really important. You need to meet, as you guys know, you need to meet with your mortgage professional. Mm -hmm. They need to look at your income. They need to look at your assets. They need to run your credit. They need to find out, um, they need to find out uh, how much money that you are eligible to borrow, which will determine what type of what your price range mm -hmm. is, where you're going to be looking for homes and what mm -hmm. price range. It's also critically important to a seller because the seller wants to make sure that you're going to the you as the buyer is going to be a mortgageable and they're not wasting their time taking mm -hmm. their house off the market, right. wasting their time and then for you not to be able to get the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's the first thing you should have in hand and your agent's going to ask you for that. Your realtor is going to ask you for that. It's the first thing you're going to do probably even before they start showing you homes. Right. So you'll have that in place when you find your first home. Once you've uh, put an accepted offer, you, you make an offer, your agent will do it for you. You put the offer in, the offer gets accepted, okay, by the seller, they want to move forward. That's the time you start engaging some of your other professionals. You want to get a home inspection. It's critically important that you get a good home inspector in there to go ahead and to, to take a look at the house. And what is the, I, I tell my clients, the big takeaway, okay, from a home inspection is that you want to make sure the house is in the same condition, in essence, okay, as it appears as it appears to you, uh, to your naked eye, okay? okay. In other words, there are no latent there is no latent problems, right. something that you're unaware of there, and that the condition of the house is reflected in the price, because remember, you're not buying a new home, okay? Um, so you want to make again, you want to make sure that uh, that you know what it is you're buying. Very very important. And again, the condition is reflected in the price, okay? I also want to caution, caution buyers that New York, okay, with limited exception, is a, a buyer beware state. Okay. So when you're buying a house as a purchaser, you're buying it in as-is condition. So your inspection is really important. And again, to reiterate, it's important to know what it is you're buying. Uh, and then you could talk to your agent whether or not, um, whether or not the condition of the house, again, is reflected in the price. Assuming it is, home inspection goes well, or even if it doesn't go well, we can negotiate something, whether it be credit or additional repairs. Mm -hmm. That'll be the time that uh, the seller's attorney will draft the contract. They'll send it over to the purchaser's attorney. The purchaser's attorney then will go through the contract, okay? okay. And they look for a bunch of different things in there, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's numerous, uh, truthfully. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that, that will, right away, that um, a buyer's lawyer will look for is, they're going to see if they're, they want to see if the property or the, the deal is contingent on financing. Mm -hmm. So if the purchaser is going for financing, then there needs to be a mortgage contingency clause in the contract, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we're going to look to see what type of title, um, title work that needs to be done. And this, this Bridget, this answers mm -hmm. your question. Mm -hmm. So um, when, when the contract ultimately gets signed by the buyer and then signed by the seller and returned to the purchaser's attorney, the purchaser's attorney will, will go ahead right away and order title then, okay? And, um, and in reviewing the contract, you'll want to make sure that the, that the contract states that the seller needs to provide good and marketable title, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. That there, that, uh, there are limited exceptions, just things like a, a survey, for example. Right. Uh, and, um, 
And in, do, and in doing that, then we'll be able to move forward. We'll know what to expect from when the title comes back, mm -hmm. okay? And then we'll be able to proceed from there. Mm -hmm. And I think it lends itself to the question, well, what, what, is, what, is, what is a title report, really? Mm -hmm. So um, purchaser, a purchaser's attorney will engage a title company who will then send uh, an abstractor, okay, mm -hmm. down to the municipality or the county mm -hmm. in this case, mm -hmm. and they will do a what's called an abstract of title. They'll go back mm -hmm. 40 years okay. and they will search the records mm -hmm. to make sure there's never been a problem in ownership, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Uh, within the chain of title. Um, uh, and then from there, they'll produce an abstract and they'll send that abstract to the title company. Mm -hmm. In addition, at the same time, the title company will reach out to the municipality and they'll check on the taxes, they'll check on uh, the certificates of occupancy, mm -hmm. they'll check to see if there's any housing or building violations, if right. the property's connected to a sewer, any, any emergency repair liens, anything which can, which can affect the ownership interest of the house, okay? Right. It'll all come back together. The title company will re re produce a report laying out if there are any issues. Mm -hmm. And if there are, it's, it's really important to have a group of professionals who, not, who know how to overcome them, to remedy them, to mm -hmm. this way you get good uh, marketable title at closing. Expedite, right? Expedite, yep. yeah. absolutely, often, yes. If you yes. need that, right, yep. sometimes you do. Oh, right? We've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> what about some of the things that, um, you know, sometimes buyers don't know? They, they don't, before they come to you, let's say they come to us, yeah. they don't kn understand that, you know, a contract is gonna lay out certain dates um, it's going to include, you know, your down payment, the type of mortgage you're getting, your, the, the date upon which you have to receive a mortgage commitment. Why don't you talk about some of sure. that, those inclusions? Th those, are, those are great questions. So typically, uh, to, to start with you first, the down payment. Mm -hmm. So when, when, as a purchaser, when you sign the contract, okay, right. you'll generally sit with, you sit with your attorney. Your attorney will explain to you exactly what the contract means, what your obligations mm -hmm. are. And at that point, you'll write a check for the down payment. Typically, the check isn't written to the seller. It's written to the seller's attorney as attorney, right. which means it's escrow money, and it sits in the seller's attorney's escrow account. Right. The down payment also acts as what's known as a liquidated damage, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a provision in the contract by the same name. It's a liquidated damage provision. And what it says is that if you breach the contract, okay, um, that what you are risking is your down payment. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there are obviously some exceptions right. to this. Every contract is a little bit different, mm -hmm. right. but that seems to be the general standard, mm -hmm. okay? So um, down payments range, mm -hmm. depending upon the market, depending upon loan programs, uh, but typically they could be anywhere from 3.5% to 10% mm -hmm. of the sale price, mm -hmm. okay? So it's really important that your attorney understands and that you understand what your obligations are mm -hmm. because that's a lot of money okay and right. none of us want to jeopardize it for mortgage if you're going for a mortgage and you're a buyer you're going for a mortgage the typical contract will give anywhere from 30 to 45 days for which you for which to produce a commitment from your lender mm -hmm. okay and that 30 to 45 days is from when you went to contract it's when the seller Fully signs executed. the contract okay it's a great question Fully executed. So it's not when the buyer signs it's when the seller signs when the seller, the seller signs, signs second Mm -hmm. Right. Which also, uh, which, which brings up another great point. Until the seller signs, and you're they deposit your down right. payment check, you're not in contract. Right. They could still sell it to somebody else. So that's why, if you have a house that you really love, it's important to move quickly. Right. Okay. okay. Um, so we spoke about down payment. We spoke about mortgage contingency mm -hmm. time frames, and the other, uh, the other, the other big time frame in a contract is the closing, closing date. date. And once again, in New York, it's very different than the rest of the right. country. Right. So in New York, it, in most contracts, our, our, the date that we list is, is it's called an on or about date. Mm -hmm. So say, for example, the closing date is on or about January 1st. Mm -hmm. Now, that little language, which seems so innocuous, has real legal significance because it creates a window to close. So the closing doesn't mean, if we have a closing date in the contract on or about January 1st, it doesn't mean we're closing January 1st. It means we're going to establish a 30-day window in which to close. So in other words, the closing in all likely will be from anywhere between January 1st and February 1st. Right. 
and it's done that way in the state because there's there's a lot that needs to happen for right. closing to come together. Mm -hmm. The mortgage has to be clear to close. The bank's attorney has to be, have his schedule free. Mm -hmm. The buyer's attorney has to have their schedule free. Mm -hmm. Seller's attorney has to have their schedule free. Um, the title needs to be cleared. cleared. Right. So because all of that needs to happen um, and, and there are a lot of conflicting schedules, um, we, we create this window in which to close. Mm -hmm. um, and we often at times we don't know until typically, you know, you, you could be, although you know the target dates, you don't know the exact closing date to a few weeks before. Right. So, uh, and if you're approaching that time frame where you're going to, you know it's going to go past that, that's where that communication that you were talking about in the beginning is really important. It's so important yeah. that you're able to speak to the other attorney and Absolutely. you want to make sure that you have an attorney that mm -hmm. returns your calls. Another important part, which you, which you guys obviously know already too, is when you deal with a lot of, a lot of out-of-state lenders, for example, mm -hmm. they don't understand this. Right. So they think, because in other states, that's the way it works. January 1st is the day you close, for example. Mm -hmm. So they only lock your interest rate through January 1st. <laughs> In New York, that's not the case. That's why it's so important to deal with people with experience. And I keep going right. back to that. Right. They know here, you guys know, that right. we have this 30-day window. So when, when the interest rate gets locked, and I tell the clients this all the time, when they speak to their mortgage professional, make sure they lock the interest rate at least through February 1st in this example. Okay. Otherwise, you could get caught and stuck in a place where you have to pay extension fees mm -hmm. or right. you have to go back to market for interest right. rate. Right. And the contract is not contingent upon interest no. rate. You've already produced your commitment. You're obligated to close right. or you could lose your down payment. Right. They have to, we have to block them in to, to take into account the confines of the dates of the contract. Right. Absolutely. And that's it. You brought up something that maybe um, just for the benefit of some viewers who are new to this, um, you know, when you put that money down at contract signing, I say it's like the kids, you know, there's no do-overs with right. you. you. When a, a buyer puts money down, that money is then at risk. Yes. They can't walk away. Why don't you talk to that and also explain to our viewers what happens if you don't get a mortgage, if you right. cannot get a so mortgage? So those are both great questions. The down payment secures your obligations under mm -hmm. the contract as a buyer. Okay. If you didn't have, you know, in order to have a valid contract, you need you need a buyer, you need a seller, and you need something called consideration. Right. Consideration is the down payment. In other words, money. Right. Okay. Right. Money makes a contract. You know, um, if you don't, and and back back up one second. Okay. The punishment for not following through on your obligations under the contract is the loss of the down payment. I alluded to it earlier, it's called liquidated damage. Right, right. Okay? right. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that the attorney goes over the obligations you have in the contract. Mm -hmm. And you just mentioned the mortgage contingency, which is one of the biggest. Right. So you'll have anywhere of 30 to 45 days in which to get a commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't get a commitment, you get your money back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Provided, however, you've acted in good faith. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which means you need to be diligent in getting all of your loan information over to your mortgage professional. Right. You can't make any misrepresentations in the contract. Right. So contracts generally will have language in there where you'll have to attest that you have no judgments, you have no open bankruptcies, you, have, um, you know of no reason why you can't get a mortgage, that you have sufficient income, sufficient assets, right. and sufficient credit, and that the seller is relying on this information in accepting your offer. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're right. Your homework you needs to, to be done ahead of time. Right. Very, very important. And you have to act in good faith. Critical. You have to, you know, you, you're, you're making a commitment to buy something and you just can't back out once you're you right. put a lot of money down. And think of it from the seller's perspective. That's right. Right? Yeah, Here's a seller. He's got his, they have their house on the market. Right. Okay. They've gone ahead and they've entered into contract with you. They've gone. They've taken the house off the market right. now. Mm -hmm. Right. They prepared maybe to buy something else, relying on that, right. a move somewhere, booking movers, maybe buying another house for which they need the money from right. this house. Right. They've made an investment in you in lots right. in a lot of ways, and it could all vanish like that. Right. So if you've acted in bad faith, 
um, there's a consequence for that. And the consequence for that is retention of the down payment. Right. I think that a lot of um, people don't recognize if you're a first time home buyer, you don't recognize it. Right. But when you bought and sold a house and you want to coordinate two separate transactions, right, where people actually can sell in the morning and get their proceeds and buy in the afternoon, use that as down payment, people don't appreciate all that gets involved. It's amazing how that... And it works. That but works. <laughs> Somehow or other it works. It does. Know. There's a lot that goes and into And how many it dominoes down yeah. the road yeah. of... You're exactly right. It's unbelievable. And another thing in New York, which, which I'm glad you alluded to this as well, is that contracts here are typically not contingent upon you having to sell your home. Right. So if you need to sell your home in order to buy the next one, which most people do, honestly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. The contract is not contingent upon that. Meaning, in other words, if the reason you don't qualify for your mortgage mm -hmm. for the new home is because you haven't sold your old home, it's not a valid reason to get out of the contract. Right. right. So you really have to do your homework ahead right. of time. As mortgage people, we always look at that and yeah. say, and what happens if? Right. If that house doesn't sell, then and we have to qualify them holding both mortgages, and a lot yeah. of times that's not possible. Yes, right. So that's really, you know, that, that can become a little tricky. Sure. And that's when we, we have to really be diligent in yeah. terms of what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, because this month, November, is VA Awareness Month, and we've actually kicked off a, a campaign. And, you know, VA mortgages mm -hmm. are 100% financing plus closing costs, mm -hmm. all your closing costs. The Veterans Administration stands behind these mortgages, right? And, um, and they're a protected class, too. Yes, the military is. So, and what we... Um, and, you know, we had a meeting about this, and a lot of times sellers are reluctant to accept that 100% financing. Um, Contra has a program that allows us to actually get someone a commitment beforehand, so there shouldn't be any concern about that. But you as an attorney, and we talk to buyers about this all the time, you as an attorney, I mean, it's, if, it's really hard to... Uh, you know, tell somebody, take your house off the market with 0% down. So we um, always try and get that, that buyer to get a little bit of money, put, put a little bit of money together either through a gift or their right. own funds and then get it back. How do you help sellers walk through that process if there is a veteran that's interested in, in, in buying that home? And how do you help to give the veteran that or veterans selling the home as well. Yeah. And, oh, oh, and both ways, to sell to right? A veteran. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, you help to so bring that, that process along? We understand the the money component right. of it. So it goes back to something that we discussed previously. And what is a contract? It's offer. It's acceptance. It's consideration. Down right. payment. So mm -hmm. even though the veteran can go ahead and can borrow hundred percent of the cost of the home mm -hmm. without a down payment without them putting up some money, money. at contract there's nothing securing their right. obligations under the contract. in fact they're not even in contract right, right. seller could still sell the Typically. house to somebody else right you know in law school they talk about a peppercorn you know uh, right. it, 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 as long as you have some consideration right. even a peppercorn Corn. right uh, you're you you know that the contract. contract is valid it's enforceable in a court of right. law yeah. So you have to put some money down. Even if you're borrowing 100% plus, right. you could get that money back then at closing, right. okay? Right. But you have to put down something, otherwise you're not in contract. Right. It's always important to look at something from the other person's perspective or the right. other side's perspective mm -hmm. as well. If you're a seller, if I'm representing a seller, I want to put down, I want the, my buyer or the buyer of my client's home mm -hmm. to put down as much money as possible. Right. Because the more they have vested, the, 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 the more that they're going to try to honor their obligations That's under right. the contract and mm -hmm. not just walk away. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, you know, you have to explain the situation to the, to the seller's attorney. Right. Let them know it's a VA loan, although they probably know already because that's mm -hmm. how the offer was submitted. Mm -hmm. right. And then we have to work out some type of reasonable, given the circumstances, consideration right. or down payment yeah. and contract. Well, we, when, when these guys come in and, and women come in, we always tell them, look, you're going to have to put something down. So if you can get 
a gift from mom, dad, brother, sister. We can, you can get that right. back at the right. end because we recognize that. But it's nice when you have an attorney that will, you know, explain both many, sides yeah. to them. Absolutely. And so that these, these, these people, these military people get a chance in, in trying to get a home Absolutely. and with the hundred percent benefit. And you, you know. know, I've done many, many of these and yeah, usually you, know. you find, especially if, if the attorneys are experienced and and the experienced ones right. kind of all know each other. Mm -hmm. They know what a VA loan is. They right. understand how it works and we all love and respect our military. Right. You know, having that conversation with the other attorney, invariably you work something out that works for everybody. Right, right. So. And that, and we, yeah, and we're proud here at Contour because we have that secure buy program. We will issue a commitment, a credit commitment, and then it's just the house and the appraisal coming in. You wow. know what I mean? So they will actually. Um, so our next VA, when when we do that, and it's a hundred percent financing. Wow. I mean, you know us. We'll be able to tell you, there's a commitment here. You know, it's just, we'll wait for the appraisal to come in, but there's not going to be any issue with this person getting this home. Right. And, but they have to give the consideration as well. That brings us back to that, that team of experts that right. you bring, it, you bring in, into the picture when you're, when you're buying a, a home, how important it is to have the right attorney, to have the right realtor, to have the right mortgage people, um, the right home inspector. Yeah. I mean, every, everything, you know, you're you're making the biggest in investment, or I should say, decision of your life. Besides, get married and having kids and right. buying a home, um, you should take it very serious on who you work with, and that's why we had you on today. Oh, thank Tom, you very, thank you. you. Yeah, you know, We've, you're a phenomenal attorney. He's great, and he, you're great to work with. He really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, you nope. really care, yeah. and that's that yeah. to me, and 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 that's. Bridget and I, that's who we want to work with. We want to work with people that truly care, that it's not just a job. You, you care yeah, about your clients. You when you love what you do, it, 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 it yeah. all, I mean, it right. sounds cliche, yeah. but it, it's really true. It's not work. Yeah. Right. You know, so we've that's gone, my favorite part. Yeah, you know, yeah. The that's part. good. Yeah. Well, we've gone over a lot, but tell us what you think we haven't touched on. What do you think we should let our viewers know maybe something that we haven't talked about I mean there's so many things that come I mean up, you know? <laughs> there's there, there's a lot and I mean listen you know over over 20 25 years of mm -hmm. doing this right. we've all we've all seen a lot come up right. on uh, on transactions mm -hmm. and we certainly can't touch on them all yeah. mm -hmm. um, but I think more important than what we haven't spoken about is I guess maybe just to reiterate mm -hmm. what Charlie just said and what I alluded to earlier mm -hmm. as well it's it's so important to work with people who have been there and done that, right. and because they'll know they'll know what to do, um, they'll know what to do when the when the when the time comes if there's an issue, there's and that and that'll help you navigate the waters and get you into your house. Absolutely. So, thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. I well, appreciate it. Well, we want to thank you. It's really right, Charlie. I mean, oh, yeah. you're an attorney. You're very busy. We know you have a very active office. And for you to come and take a lot of your time, we really do appreciate it. And, I, and I'd like to thank you both for having me. It's really yeah. been a thank pleasure you. and a lot of fun. Tom, why don't you tell our audience how they can get in touch with you? And Great. So, um, again, my name is uh, Tom Parks. Uh, I'm an attorney at Parks Law Group. Uh, PC, as you can see, I'm a good attorney, but not very creative. Um, <laughs> my uh, address is uh, 694 Motor Parkway. I'm in Hop Hog, New York, uh, 11788. That's Suite 101. The office telephone number is 631-421-9300. Fax number is 631-421-9303. Email address is T Parks, and it's a peculiar spelling. It's T. P A R K E S at T P Law N Y dot com. And my cell phone number is, I promise that I'm accessible, <laughs> is 516 524 3544. If you have any questions, you can contact me any of those ways. Thank you, and I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about the real estate process, uh, my information is below. Thank you.